This is Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria. My name is Joshua Ishaya, welcoming you to yet another amazing episode of the program. And of course, today we are in a farm, not just ordinary farm, but then it's a pepper farm. Pepe are things that everyone uses at home every day to make soups and some other delicacies. And there's more reason why we had to come as far as this very farm. So we can actually tell you the processes in which you grow the pepe you farm. And of course, it's just to actually make it attractive for others who are wondering what crop to actually go into so you can actually make profit and make money at the end of it. And pepe happens to be one of those crop. Stay tuned and of course, be enlightened. Uh, every farming has stages. This uh, pepper has a uh, process of nursery bed. They have process of a uh, nursery bed. You have a uh, uh, okay. You have a uh, process of a uh, nursery bed. You get the seedlings. You do them. You nurse them in a bed. When you cover them and they, they germinate, you water them because by the time you do the nursery bed, there's no rain. So you have to water them until they grow to a stage where it will get to the extent of uh, transplanting. By the time you transplant them, you will now start nursing them small, small, start weeding them. They will be growing gradually. Like this one now, I put it inside corn farm. It was normally, formerly a, a farm, a corn maize farm. So by the time the maize we are growing up at a small stage, then you transplant the pepper inside the corn. The corn, when they are grown there, the pepper is not receiving enough sun, it will give it the strength to make it to grow taller a little taller than normal because it was it's not get, getting uh, photosynthesis so it will grow a little bit taller than normal so by the time the corn will get to a stage when the corn will dry you will now cut the corn the pepper will be able to expand that time they will be getting enough sun then by then they will start producing pepper for you to plug and it's something that you plug on a weekly basis because the more they ripe other ones produces the more they ripe you plug the flower more as you can see now you see some of them are green, some of them are new flowers, some of them are red. So they are in processes. So this one is go coming, another one is replacing it. Until the dry season, this season will go finally before this pepper will end. Because we can plug it till December from now. So, so now, in, in farming pepper, what is the most important thing? Is it fertilizer, weeding or the seedlings? What is the most important thing? The seedling, you can get the seedling and keep. But if your plant is not fertile, I promise you, you will not have anything in it. So how do you know your fertile soil? Very good. We that we found when we look at the soil, we know it's fertile or not. If it's fertile or not, even some grasses that grow there will show you whether if it's fertile or not. Like this one now. If I just ordinarily come here and do pepper, it will not produce. I had to go to Fulani settlement to buy cow shit. Cow dung. Cow dung in trucks. Trucks. I bought almost like this in some pickup, like up to three or four of it. That I now send my workers to spray it all over this farm, just for the pepper to produce well. Sometimes you can even assist it with fertilizer, like this one, I even assisted it with a normal fertilizer. But there are some specific fertilizer you apply on it, it's not every fertilizer, because this thing is not, it's fragile. If you put a fertilizer that is not this thing with it, it will burn it. Uh -huh. So there's one we use for the pepper, not okay, every fertilizer. Okay. Uh, no, but my next question is, um, um, most of the pepper farm we see, most of like they are usually having some mixed cropping with soybeans and even corn. Is it that you must start with the corn in it, or you can just start with just planting only pepper? Mm -mm. You cannot. Uh, you can start with anyone. You can do only the pepper. You can do the corn. But we found out that some in some cases where I do the pepper, when I put only the pepper there, they don't grow tall the way I want. Because the more the more they go tall, by the time they expand, the more pepper you have, the more they produce plenty. The more wider, by the time they grow taller, because when they are short, they won't have enough branches to produce the pepper. But by the time they grow taller, they will span hand, by the time they start getting enough for this, to, in order to give you a lot of uh, good uh, harvest. So that's why we put the corn. And again, if you put only the pepper, economical wise, you are not uh, gaining it. Because by the time you calculate the money using for clearing the land, putting, fertilizing it, doing everything, the pepper might not be able, only the pepper giving you what you spent in that farm. So by the time you put corn first, now I'm harvesting the corn. If as you can see the corn the way they are, uh, here I left a some of the corn. So you can see this one now. They are still here. So by the time you open this one now, the pepper, the corn might give you half of what you spent in that farm. Now as a pepper farm now, I put pepper now. You see still beans inside. So now this pepper will not prevent the beans from producing, and the beans will not prevent the pepper to, from producing, especially when you know how you to, you do it. But it's not every species of beans you plant inside. We that do it, we know the type that will plant that will give us what we want. So that is why we put it, so that for you to make your gain. Okay. 
Uh, say, for example, you spend a hundred thousand to plant this pepper farm. How much do you think you can actually make at the end of it? Very good. Thank you very much. The everything about this crop farming is about the situation of the country at the moment. There are some years that you have enough harvest, but the, yam, the paper will not be expensive. Like some years, you plug this uh, whole one painter rubber and they will tell you it's 1,000 they will buy. But some years, you plug it and you see some people will be like, like, like some two weeks ago or so, it was sold for 6,000, 6,005 per one. So it depends on how the price, the price determines on what you get from the, the hand. So sometimes, but now the thing will be coming down somehow because by the time the paper is coming out much, People will have it here and there, you see the, the price will come down. But by the time we're still getting, getting to November ending now, you see the paper still going back because some people own, they, they have really already harvested them all. Some people, some papers are not or lo, no longer producing. So you see the thing, they will be declined in the paper, so the price will skyrocket. Okay. That is how it is. very farm now, did you use insecticide and how, how, how many times did you actually weed the farm before it got to this point of harvesting? Uh, very good, thank you very much. In, in case of pepper farm, I don't see any farm you do that you weed more time than pepper. Pepper requires constant weeding. All these kind of crops, they don't like grasses. Like this one now you see, now this is the fifth time. I've already weeded it five times. That is why we need to put some other things in order to make up the money we have spent inside. Thank you. Very, very, very good. We have two aspects of hardship. We have two aspects of uh, hardship. We have two aspects of hardship in pepper. One is the nursery bedding. When you are nursing the pepper, that is when you face the most difficult challenge. Because usually we do it during the dry season. And during that dry season, you will see we do it, there's no rain. So you have to be watering it daily, morning, evening, morning, evening, morning, evening, for it to have enough water to grow up from the nursery. Then the second aspect of this hardship is during transplanting. It's fat. If if not, it's the most difficult part or aspect of it. When you are doing your transplanting, that is when you face the most difficulty. Because during the transplanting, you might transplant it today, and if there's no rain today or tomorrow, by the next day, some will, would have killed all of them. That is the truth. Some would have, must have killed all the, 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 the transplant. So you start afresh. Like me, this year, I did here about three times, three sets of transplanting. That is why if you look at this paper now, there are some that are yet to start producing. They are in stages. The ones that did not die are the ones that are big. There are some middle ones, but as they die, I keep changing and so changing them. Wh wh why are they in stages? Is it that you planted some late and some early? Yes, yeah, some. Yes, yeah, some of them are late in the sense that the early planted, the, late, the ones I transplanted earlier, some of them died, so I had to replace them. So in, in some cases, the ones in the nursery are not up to the stage of transplanting, so you have to wait a little longer. That is why you see them in stages like that. Yes. Some of the uh, crop and on farm, you know, sometimes when you don't come to harvest them when they are getting ripe, like some of, I can see some of the birds here, they are already ripe. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't come, they tend to waste away. What happens when it comes to pepper? Yes, pepper is the same case. Like this one now, it's one week now. If I should give it another one week before, I will come to harvest them now. You see, the ones that are that, that ripe earlier, some of them will start decaying. By the time they hang on and hang on and hang on, you see them start falling on the ground. And at the, the moment rain beat them and the thing is gone, it's, it's rotting. So you lose that one.
Mm, usually on my own, everybody has the way the way he's or how he or she does does his own. But on my own, I first of all I plant my corn inside. By the time I plant the maize, I allow the maize to germinate. Okay. By the time the maize will germinate, the pepper already is nursed in the nursery, waiting for transplanting. So the moment my maize germinate, after one week or two of the germination of the maize, but I will have to wait for the maize to germinate so that I will know actually the exact place the maize germinate, so that I will not join the maize with the pepper in the same hole. Are you get what I'm saying now? They won't be at the same point, so that the pepper or the one of them will stop each other. So I will have to put them in the middle of the corn, in the middle of the maize. So I have to wait for two weeks to make sure that every maize that I planted they have already germinated. Anyone I don't see is not going to germinate again. So I will now carry the pepper and be transplanting inside them between the maize, between the maize, one after the other. After now transplanting them, then I will have to wait for another one, two to three weeks. The pepper will be able to catch from the ground. Because the first one week you plant, plant the first 10 days, the pepper never catch. Anything can happen. If too much sun, it will die. So what I will do, I will wait for like two weeks, three weeks, but because by the time you touch the sky, if the thing have not start growing roots on its own in the soil, if you weed it and you manage to shake it somehow, it might still die. So you have to wait for it to catch, start growing its own roots. That time, the thing have already captured the ground, then you now weed it the first time with the, with the corn. And after that one, you still weed it, maybe within after another one month or three weeks, depending on how the place grow grasses. You know, the more fertile the place is, the more grasses the place grow. So the faster the grasses grow. Uh -huh. That is why you see some people keep weeding and weeding and weeding and weeding. Uh -huh. So after three weeks, you can weed after one month, depending on how you do your own programming. So you weed it until the stage where the corn will have already matured for harvesting. After harvesting the corn, you will not clear the whole part. The maize will not, the pepper will not have all the farm for itself. It will have enough air, photosynthesis. When the sun comes, rain, it will now expand and start producing. By the time it's starting to start producing, by the time it gets to a stage, you know that it's time for beans. You can now, the ones that have gap, it's not even every uh, pepper farm you put beans. Some of them is risk. If the pepper is so covered, if this place is so covered now, I may not put beans because you know not allow the beans to have air eh, to produce. Uh, that is how the thing works. Okay. People say uh, pepper is one of the most profitable crop to farm because it's almost like some couple of months every day you tend to harvest. How true is that? Uh, I will agree with them in one way, in the other way I will not agree with them. Pepper is a perishable crop, especially this particular type of pepper that we do. It's a perishable something that when you harvest it, whether you like it or not, you need to sell it. When you go to the market, if you are expecting to sell it 10,000 per bag and you go there, it's 3,000, you cannot come back with it. You must have to sell. But if you are lucky, you get to market and you're expecting 10,000, you get that day, maybe one thing or the other ha happened to hit that the, the influx of pepper in the market and the thing goes to 15,000, it's also your luck. It's a perishable goods, so you need to sell it. But if in any year that at the end of the day they say maybe there's one problem, the pepper did not produce in that year, produce well that year, and pepper is scarce, the price will go up. You end up making profit enough. Why we like doing it is you know, these farms they are on stages. They help you to like me personally. Why I do pepper is because of my the training of my fish and birds. Okay. At a stage, this stage of the year, we usually get broke. Because almost all you have, you have invested in your farm. Like now, every farm now is on the stage of maybe waiting for one month or two for, before harvesting. So you must have spent almost everything you have for the farm, in that farm. But now, you will not be, I, will not, I won't be having money with me. Let me use myself as an example. So now, what I do, by the time I raise money to book my beds from day old and brood them, week in, week out, I'll be plugging the pepper in order to be buying feed for the beds and my fish. So the pepper will be feeding them. That is how I make, calculate my own money from the pepper. The pepper is what feed my pets. From the pepper, whatever I plot from the pepper. So any year that you see that the pepper did not produce well, I'll find it very, very difficult. I'll end up maybe borrowing money or spending the money I don't want to, I don't intend to spend for the pets or the fishes. That is how, that's why I normally do my pepper. Um, where do you get your seedlings from? Very good. Initially, sometimes you can go and buy from people that do not know but the, the problem is that there's no guarantee if you go to buy, because you don't know. One day I nursery there, you wouldn't know the one that is one. You wouldn't know that it's pe chili pepper. You wouldn't know whether they are tata You wouldn't know that if they are a small, small type of pepper. So what you do, for me that as a farmer, that I do this pepper, there's a stage, maybe by next month, like November, the, there's enough sun. I will now come here and start plugging some pepper. Maybe I will, if, I will plug like three of this big painter. I will use knife to go and cut them into two, 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 two. Then I put them on the sun and they will dry very well. Then when I dry them very well, time for me to do my bed, I will now put them in the mortar and as if I'm pounding it small, small, so that I will not break the seed. By the time I do it, that I will now pour it together and sieve out the seed. I will now use them for my bed, not the bed. 
How reliable is that process? That process is much more reliable because if you do it without cutting it, it will not dry quick. There will be, if some, in some processes, if you do it without cutting it that way, you find out that the, the, the seed may rot in before the pepper dry and you will not know. When you have hope that you have pepper seed, you will now put them in nursery and they will disappoint you, they will not germinate. You will now start looking, running a head and looking for seed to plant. But that process I'm telling you now is one of the best. Or sometimes some people will keep it like one week to rot in somehow, they will now put it in the water and wash the seed out, dry it and now stock it in something. Anybody that is seeing himself as a graduate that you're not going to find, let me tell you the truth about this. For me, I'm not rich. I will tell you I'm not rich. But I'm telling you that all these people that are working in government that are earning 100,000 a month, I can, if I earn 100,000 a month, I can't do anything with it. To not be, even 120,000 a month cannot do anything for me and my family. It's this farm that is keeping me. This farm you see, you underrate it. It's not the way it is. The big men come to me to beg me for food. I'm telling you, some of the big men you see come to me and say, Oh God, you have, as, as long as you have the variety that people want, you have the species that people want. That's the type of beans I have now, this beans now. For more than, for one week now, I've received more than 70 calls to get the ceiling of this. And I'm selling this morning, I sell to one for man. I sell a mudu, 1,500. When no other beans in the market is 1,000 naira, a mudu. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some 2,000 in some cases. If you go to that joint now, you see the beans they plant there, all of them, they bought it from me. Because they know I have the, always have the best seed to plant. I have some chemical shops where they do sell farm prayer, these things, and I supply them some of my bee seedlings that they sell to people. They will buy from me, they will resell. So this farming, if you are taking it as, as, as you're taking it for granted, you are wasting your time. I don't have much money to it, but what I know is that if you have that money, if you calculate, if you're a family man, or maybe a family of six or seven, you calculate in a full year the money you spend in buying food alone. You will know that if you have that food in your house, you use that money for something very big. So for me, I don't look for food. I have it. Like corn, I will have the old one until the new one will come out. The rice, I, like, uh, the rice I told you about probably now is the old one. The one of since last year. And the one in the farm now is all at uh, the stage of producing again. So by the time I finish this one, before this one finishes, another one is down. So my family, my children won't even know. Like yam, it's expensive, very expensive now. But my people don't even know the season of yam and when there is not the season of yam. Every time they have the yam to eat. Because by the time we start eating this one, my one, the one from the farm will come out, I sell it, I deal with it, I deal on it. Are you kidding me? But those big men you see, some of them press calculator before they will be able to buy these foods, you see. I know some of them that will come to me, yeah, with their jeep, they'll pack their jeep and please, oh God, this breaking one, give me now. You, 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 you are a poor man. You'll be asking yourself, I say, ah, oh God, you, you, you that you are a big man. They will tell you the truth. Someone, somebody told me that this car I see is a camouflage. I'm telling you, I'm not thinking about food because I'm farming it. I store beans in my house, I store the rice in my house, I store corn in my house, I do fish, I do chicken, I have cassava, I do elibo, I all of them are in my house. Okay. So I don't buy them. Okay. So finally, what can you say to Nigerian government? So the truth is that I always say it, always I say it. Nigeria, if they want to have food security in Nigeria, Nigerian government should look out, reach out to the local people who are doing the farming, not allocating billions of naira every month, every year that they are doing, giving farming loan. This one, no, they should go to the farms, go to the local areas, and meet the farmers one on one and assist them any way they want it, so that there will be food security. If they, are, if, if they like, let them be bringing out 200 trillion every year for farming. There will still be food scarcity in Nigeria. It will not be enough for more than 200 million population. They should reach out to the local farmers assist them if government can give me 50,000 naira today 50 million naira today as I'm standing here in the next five years I know how I will reduce employ uh, unemployment within my locality so by the time Nigeria I was thinking about this the other time I said if Nigeria will be blinking 10, 10 billion naira every year and using it to support 1, 1,000 Nigerian people every year 10, 10 million per person for five good years it would have been 5,000 it would have been um, uh, 10, 10 million uh, it would have been 1 million Nigerians in the next five years, giving him 10, 10 million. I'm telling you, anybody that is reasonable that you give 10 million today to add it to his farm, in the next year, he will employ five to 10 people to work with him. Automatically, if you give, you established 1,000 people in that same year and they employ at least five, five people the next year, times five people by that 1,000, it's about 5,000 people. Right. Unemployment will be reducing. At the end of the day, banditry will be reducing because this will be that you see doing kidnapping because of a lack of job because they have nothing to do, no way, no means of uh, getting what they eat, so they have to enter into one batting or the other. Right. But by the time they have like something like someone like me, how much will you pay me to be a political talk? I can't. How much will you pay me to go and do he who he who who here? No, I'm thinking of what to do in my farm. I have I'm busy. Right. I've not been able to sit down to eat my food in my house. You know, when I done, I will have time to go and answer someone that will say I'll go here and call somebody. I can't do that. Yeah. So by the time you reduce all this unemployment, you see all this insecurity will reduce drastically.
Well, with that, we'll come to the end of the program. Back to Farm right here on Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria. When next you see Pepe in your homes, on your soup, just know the sort of stress they go through to make sure that is actually brought to your table. Until some other time, my name is Joshua Oshaya. Bye for now. <laughs>